Hello, welcome, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, Kaz, your host here for Episode 1, Part 3 of Kaz's Fighter Jet Roundtable Tournament. Today we have something special for you. Today I've received enough submissions to do a special double-length episode. That means twice the aircraft, twice the explosions, twice the missiles, and twice the winners. With this, this will mean that uh, we now have enough aircraft to move from the quarterfinals into the semifinals and final matches of episode one. Who will win? Well, you'll just have to keep watching and find out. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and zoom on into the watchtower as per usual and see what kind of aircraft we'll be looking at today. So, first off, here in uh, the first corner, we have the ZFJ-201B Teleka. This is sent in by Panzernoff, uh, someone who is a bit of a veteran when it comes to submitting aircraft. We've seen many of his in uh, previous uh, episodes of Fighter Jet Showdown, uh, competing in the Roundtable Tournament for the first time. So, let's go ahead and take a look at these uh, Telekas. We have uh, already, we've got three hidden Vulcans, one here, one here, and one on the other side, running with uh, bog standard AIM-9 Sidewinder heat-seeking missiles. This aircraft looks like it has a lot of control surfaces here. We've got uh, tail fins all over the place. We have elevons, canards up front, and uh, it seems to be running with the Saturn engines, the old standby everyone tends to go with. Although, we also have the Mark I non-commercial cockpit, which uh, is something we don't see very often. It does look quite nice. Looks a bit like, uh... Looks a bit like an F-18 cockpit, which, uh... I really like. Looks quite snazzy. No special weapon loadout on this aircraft. Most people seem to be avoiding those. Uh, kind of a shame, really, since they're one of the things that sets this apart from everything else. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're doing it wrong. After all, uh, special weapons, they do have their high costs and drawbacks. So, let's go ahead and uh, finish up talking about this aircraft and move on to looking at aircraft number two. And here we are over here taking a look at aircraft number two for the day, the AFX-103B, sent in by Jim and Saw, who has also sent in several aircraft. Uh, this one is using an NMB Type 57 cockpit, one that I tend to favor quite a bit. It's a very sleek, stealthy-looking cockpit. Uh, let's see, what else? It also... Ooh, here we go! It's using uh, something new, the nice, Mark C uh, nice MK series, or NMB, style 117S turbo engines. These are rather interesting. They're not quite as powerful as the uh, Product 30, and they're not quite as single-engine reliant uh, as the WB-10 engines. However, they do offer a, s a little bit more gimbal than the average uh, Product 30 engine. They have a little more control. Interesting facet. Uh, we also, looks like, uh, trying to find... Ah, here we go! Finally, some pulse lasers. This is using a single pulse laser. Looks like it is, uh, yeah, looks like it is taking the place of a gun, which means it gets to keep its full missile loadout. These are very light aircraft, so uh, as we can see, it has one, two, it's like five missiles, uh, which means it's uh, probably just shy of ten tons. All right, so. Uh, interesting there, the pulse laser is loaded on the center line, which means it will have more accuracy than uh, some other things. Uh, it is only one, so that means it suffers a little bit as far as uh, fire rate, even more than using the duel. However, one solid hit will do a lot of damage to the competition. So, without further ado, and uh... Yammering for me, let's go ahead and return to the watchtower and get these suckers into the air for round one. So here we are back at our watchtower, the neutral observer to begin round one. Let's go ahead and get these planes into the air and see what they're made of, shall we? See those Saturn engines giving the, uh, 
Telica is a bit of a kick. You also have the AFX 103Bs, which uh, I'm probably just going to call the 103Bs from now on for ease of, uh, ease of telling them apart. They, however, do seem to have a higher beginning altitude. That is a bit of the trade-off between the NMB engines and the Saturn engines. Saturns uh, have an immediate kick with that powerful afterburner. The uh, NMBs don't have quite as much immediate power, however, they do get quite a kick once they start moving, which means uh, if their craft burn a lot of uh, momentum and energy coming in, that uh, they can be sitting ducks. However, that doesn't seem to be the case here, as both sides seem to have uh, launched many missiles at one another. We're going to go ahead and uh, move it. Uh-oh, we already have a bit of a collision. Looks like one of the uh, AFXs hit the ground. Never really a good thing. Yep, and we can see it's lost an engine. However, it's still got uh, its pulse laser, so it still might be in decent, uh, decent shape. Nothing too exciting. Oh! Just as I say that, we've got Sidewinders coming in from the Telecas. The Telecas take out one of the 103s. And the second one is already right on the crosshairs of the Telecas. Very sleek, very agile looking aircraft, these Telecas. Uh, they have control surfaces both in the front and rear, allowing for quite a lot of pivot power. One of the Telecas does manage to line up a solid hit with those 20 millimeters. Those have been 30 millimeters, that thing might have been dead. Moving in behind, close range fire from those Vulcans. Looks like that AFX is down. And a very fast round one goes to the Telecas. Let's go ahead and get our planes here into round two. So here we are at the beginning of round two. Let's go ahead and get our plane started. Now, if the Telecas manage to win this one, that means they win the round. In that case, I am rooting for the 103Bs, if only because I always do like to see things go to, uh, go to a round three. It means that the aircraft are far more equally, uh, equally suited to one another. Always nice. So again, even though those Telecas are first off the mark, the 103Bs managed to get to their higher altitude rather quickly using those engines. Competition waiting to start. And with that, we're off. Aircraft turning in. Looks like this time it's the Telecas to get the missiles off first. AIM-9 streaking in. This 103B getting awfully close to those hills. And a 120D out. So it's a radar-seeking missile coming in at high speed. Hits the ground. With that, the first missile pass is over. Let's go ahead and hop into close view to see what we've got here. So we have the 103Bs coming in uh, quite quickly, looking to fire a Sidewinder close range. It tracks, and it's a hit! Starts lighting up that Teleka. Looks like that Teleka might have lost its... It has! It's lost its engines. That's one of the problems with the Saturn engines. Despite the fact that they are very powerful, they are quite weak when it comes to hit points. That's going to knock that Teleka out of the running completely. It's the uh, high gimbal of those uh, 117S engines... Engines actually based off of the current engines on the Pack Fa or SU-25. Looks like that Teleka had a bit of a rough landing. Kind of hard to land without engines. And I didn't see it, but it looks like we lost one of the 103s. Yep, that looks like a, a missile hit. Nothing else seems to really cause confetti like that. This is now a 1v1. It could be anybody's fight. They're not flying directly at each other. Oh, when we get a joust with those pulse lasers. 
Pelico looking a, a, little, a little uncomfortable there. And Pulse Laser keeps streaking on by. Teleka doing its best. With 103B in, uh, in a bit of a chase position. It'll be interesting to pop into fighter mode here. Coming around for another pass. Lining up with that pulse laser. All it's going to take is one hit, and that Teleka's going to feel it. Teleka, it appears, is far more uh, unstable and maneuverable at the same time. However, though it's awfully squirrely, the 103B is sticking to its tail like glue. Hasn't been able to pull away. So very close with those pulse laser shots. That Teleka just jinking every which way it possibly can to try and get the 103 off its tail. Looks to be completely unsuccessful with that. Teleka now seems to be turning, perhaps. It is. Some shots with the Vulcans. A solid high, high G turn from the 103B to get into the range. Starts firing with that laser. We have lag and we have... Wow, looks like an absolutely decapitated Teleka. Yup, completely decapitated. No cockpit whatsoever. And that is the power of the pulse lasers if they can hit a target. And uh, without a doubt, it appears that the 103Bs have indeed won round two. Means we are going to a round three, ladies and gents. These are both very capable planes. Let's see how they fare in round three. Here we go, start of round three. Let's go ahead and get these aircraft into the air as quick as possible. We got a whole another set of fights to go through today. And following the same pattern as before, the Telecos are the first off the pad, but the 103Bs are the first to climb high. Height can be a bit of an advantage when it comes to the beginning of a dogfight. You have more energy to burn, more speed. Although it's not always guaranteed that that's going to win you the game. And we're off again. Once again, the Teleka's just firing a complete, just storm of AIM-9 missiles. I'm streaking in. Missiles seem to have missed. We're going to go ahead and slip now into fighter mode. Following the 103Bs as they make their advance, we had a, looks like a collision or perhaps a uh, problem, uh, problematic detonating missile on that. Everybody dumping flares trying to avoid the absolute furball of missile fire. We just had a 103B taken out. I saw a Sidewinder streak in. That's definitely from a Sidewinder hit. Those are nasty missiles. Now the real question is whether the 103B can win in a 2v1 uh, scenario. It does have that pulse laser. All it takes, as we saw last time, is one good shot from that pulse laser and these planes could be down. However, it has to make it through the absolute gamut of missiles. Wait a minute! Again, we have a... It's now a 1v1. This could again be anybody's fight. That last Teleka seems to have met an unfortunate end, perhaps at the end of a Sidewinder. Once again, lining up with that Pulse Laser. Shot's barely missing. Got 
It's some old school Sonic the Hedgehog music with those blue streaks speeding by. In this case, luckily for us, they are not too fast for the naked eye. We can see them absolutely wonderfully. Another incredibly powerfully high G turn for that X103. Hey, FX103. Once again, the Telecus zipping around as much as it can, trying to make use of that mobility. But the 103B is just not having it. That Pulse Laser is doing its best, just barely riding the overheat line, and we have a collision. One of the wings has been sheared. Teleka fighting to maintain some level of control using those gimbling, uh, high power gimbal of the Saturn engines. So the 103B turns around. Let's go ahead and slip to the Teleka here. It's not, yeah, it's not looking very stable. Yet another problem with those, once the, your aircraft takes, to, with the Saturn engines, once the uh, aircraft takes some damage, and it starts spinning around, the uh, Saturns have a tendency to uh, flame out, causing the plane to spin out, which uh, we've seen on several designs using them. Had another hit from the pulse laser. Not sure where it hit, but it definitely did damage. I could hear it. One hundred three B refusing to let loose, and the Teleka refusing to die. Go ahead and put their uh, altitude here to above ground level. Another pulse laser hit. Despite looking fairly fragile, the Teleka has taken some hits from that pulse laser, still not going down. However, that shot to the wing has certainly uh, limited some of its capability. It has, however, lost a Saturn engine. It's got a single Saturn left. That unequal thrust and unequal control surfaces, it is doing its absolute best to fight back. However, uh, it may not be long for this world. Although, that said, that statement has been said before, largely before a very large upset or comeback, so never count an aircraft out. And with that, we have a direct hit to the Teleka, decapitating it again with that pulse laser fire. That means that round three's victory goes to the AFX-103B. Well, congratulations to... Uh, Congratulations to the Teleka. They will be moving on. That said, let's go introduce you to our next two aircraft. So, here we are back at the Watchtower for uh, a look at our second group of planes today. So, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at them, shall we? Wait a minute, this guy sounds familiar. Litz the Blizzard, didn't we see stuff from him already? That's correct. He lost, so he's able to resubmit with some different aircraft. And uh, this one just barely manages to be different enough. Uh, mostly because I'm feeling kind enough the poor boy didn't understand the rules completely and has since changed this design. It's no more flick, it's not flickering anymore and giving us any kind of a rave seizure. And he's since understood and fixed the, uh, the range on his guns. So, hopefully this time, it, the, uh, AFA-90 Sabercat EM-2 and a half will do better than the original Sabercat. Moving over here to the, uh, new aircraft from Litz the Blizzard, we have the MiG 1.44. Interesting enough, it has, uh, two, uh, flanker-type intakes quite nice. It has some custom canards on the front here, uh, with the procedural control surfaces. Looks like a pretty chunky boy, and it's got the loadout to match. 
has an engine we haven't seen yet either. Uh, Mark II Twin Afterburning Turbo Fan. I think that might be from Quiz Tech. I could be wrong. Either way, I do know that this happens to be a pretty powerful engine. Though it's rare people use Mark II uh, fuselages for much of anything in these kinds of competitions. So it'll be interesting to see how it pulls uh, how it pulls its weight. Uh, it's also got some uh, BK-27 Mausers, 30mm guns, two of them. So it uh, looks like we're going to get that. And the uh, first years here of the... AA-11B Banshee TV air-to-air -air missile, which is uh, radar-guided. It'll be kind of interesting to see how those do. Very interesting indeed. So, enough about that. Let's go ahead and uh, see what we've got on the other side. Alright, listen up. Ever since the start of the war, the enemy has been deploying drones. And here, we see a brand new, advanced type of drone. The Pegasus K-11, Hugen, and Munin, respectively. These are incredibly deadly fighter aircraft, unmanned. They have no morals and no conscience whatsoever. They are armed heavily with six AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, as well as two very powerful BK-27 Mauser 30mm guns. They are small, they are swift, they are deadly. They are powered by two Saturn afterburning engines, making them incredibly nimble and very, very fast. In addition to that, they have a third engine below, a single Tiger afterburning turbofan engine, which will give them the edge over just about anything of equal size, or perhaps even larger. With these devastating enemies on the field, we'll have to see whether or not the Sabercat and the MiG can overcome them. And this time, we don't have Trigger to save us. All right, and with that briefing out of the way, let's go ahead and get these aircraft into the sky. Let's see if piloted aircraft can win against drones in this new round. All aircraft, take off and scramble! Tension rises as the aircraft get higher into the sky, with both the drones circling ominously very close to one another, while the other dogfighting pair is quite separate. We'll see if this uh, winds up helping them or hindering them very soon. Aircraft now quite a bit of distance away from one another. Perhaps they're finding issues with the competition. Go ahead and cancel that and start it immediately again. Hopefully that will get the AI going. And with that, the competition starts. Already got missiles fired. Those TV guided uh, missiles are coming in. AIM 9s streaking in. The Sabercat and the MiG. Wait a minute! 
We've got something that was completely unexpected. It seems that the Pegasus have a special weapon built in. A special weapon that is not outlawed in the tournament. None other than a weapon UAV. That afterburning turbo fan, that tiny tiger afterburning turbo fan was in fact a drone fighter. A drone on a drone with a tiny, very tiny 30 millimeter cannon. It appears to have completely picked off one of the other aircraft and it's heading in again. And a second weapon UAV is fired from the UAVs. What are the Hugen and Munin doing in and of themselves? They're still flying around. Absolutely destroying the MiG. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm... I'm sorry, I... I am completely speechless. I have never seen this tactic utilized before in anything. Without a doubt, the Hugen and the Munin just absolutely annihilated the Sabercat and the MiG with this. Their unseen enemy, the Weapon UAV. So since we didn't really see it before, let's take a look and see what this thing has. A tiny little flare and probably a tiny little chaff dispenser in there if I had to guess. Yep, flare and chaff, probably built from the parent craft. Adjustable ramp intake, a single one, 30 millimeter Mauser, and just enough in the way of control surfaces and engine power to keep it running. This is an impressive and very dirty little bastard. Well, it's not illegal. Let's see how things go in round two, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are back in the watchtower for round two between these fighters. After an incredibly surprise attack by the Hugen and the Munin. Let's go ahead and get these planes into the sky again. I was not foreseeing that weapon UAV. Just to be clear, parasite fighters like that are actually fairly difficult to get working correctly. Modular missiles are also technically allowed. The only thing that matters is the part count. And considering that most aircraft have a very strict part limit of around no more than 100 parts, it's fairly difficult to get working aircraft with that many parts. However, it appears that the Hugen and the Munin have managed to do just that, making them an incredibly deadly force. So again, they're climbing to their uh, they're climbing to their altitudes here, and with that, the competition is starting yet again. Aim nines being launched from the Hugen and the Munin. This time getting the launch off first, whereas the Sabercat and the MiG-114, or the MiG-144, managed to get their missiles off. And we have a launch of the weapon UAVs from both fighters. That's it for the first missile passes. I'm gonna pop to the Sabercat and watch it from their point of view this time. Missile streaking in, aim nine just barely missing. Another aim nine coming in, it looks like. Is it gonna try and avoid it? Pop flares, anything? Weapon UAV taken out by the Sabercat, just as the Sabercat is struck by a Sidewinder.
Now it's all up to the MiG. Can it manage to take on three targets? Admittedly, the weapon UAV is not coming along with missiles, just guns. Guns are rather deadly. And since the total weapon loadout for any smaller craft like that has to come from the total variant allowed to the parent craft, looks like the weapon UAVs are done. They've served their purpose. Now it's just the MiG trying to hold its own. Let's go back to the Hugin here. Thirty millimeters stripping off the engines and the tail. Some incredibly nimble, very deadly fighters. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's an incredibly fast, decisive victory again for the Huguen and the Munin. These drones, these drones are not to be trifled with by any means. Incredibly deadly, light, and very fierce. Well, congratulations to Box of Stardust. The Box of Stardust has uh, opened up a can of whoop-ass into this competition. And dare I say, he might have the aircraft to beat. That is, if you can call them aircraft. They're more like demons. We have the first demons of the round table, ladies and gentlemen. Well... Since we've had multiple aircraft in this episode, I won't be doing my usual pan and shots of the winning craft. Instead, you'll have to wait till, uh... Jeez Louise, I'm still speechless. You're gonna have to wait until part four to see what happens with these aircraft now in the mix. Until next time, I've been Kaz. Take care and fly safe, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you next time.